a child's day basically begins at like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. in the morning, and they go down to the lake. They have to get the canoe ready, they have to get the nets ready, and then they cast the nets. The lake is full of these covered trees. When the water is down, you can see them, but when the water level is up, you can't really see them. And so the kids don't really know where these trees are, and if a net gets tangled into one, one of the dangers that the kids face is having to jump in and untangle that net. Some of these kids don't know how to swim. You know, a lot of kids drown. Any child under the age of 18 that's doing an adult's work is child labor. And any child that is being sold by their parent or guardian to someone for to do labor is trafficking. Ebolia, Ebolia, They don't look at it as trafficking. They just see it as, I'm helping you out by taking care of your kid. And you see how they use these kids at that time, and that's the school hour, and the kids are supposed to be at school. As you can see, this, ch this child had been stolen. The childhood had been just stripped away from him. And then for life now, he will never understand how to, you know, how to be a child, childlike. Because these kids are innocent. And they are paying for what they didn't, they didn't do nothing. They don't deserve what they are getting. City of Refuge, we, we are a very small grassroots organization at this point, but we have a very big vision. Our main purpose in working in the Volta region is one, to educate them about child trafficking. What is it? It's not just giving a child a job or a trade, it's taking away their childhood. And then we also go there to, to bring hope to the kids. DK was working with uh, uh, the slave master, his slave master name was Joseph. Uh, he was working with him for, I think, five years now. Five years before we rescued DK. DK worked on the lake. Um, he can tell you, I think he can tell you more better. He can see more better what he fixed on the lake and the kind of job he do. 
Sometimes, you know, when, when they start to tell you stories about how they obtained the kids, where they came from, they'll tell you one thing this day, and then the next time you go back, they might have polished up their story, and then they'll have something else to tell you. <laughs> That's why we do those investigations before we actually rescue kids, uh, because we want to know exactly the truth. They can't leave. They don't get to go to school. They're using hazardous tools. They're exposed to chemicals. And they're, they're not having a childhood, and you can see that in their eyes. They're vacant. These kids are prisoners. They're slaves. We're not talking about no no the government's not coming to do anything. We come here as as your own friend. Okay? As your own friend. You know. Last time we came, we we, we discover almost how many? 30 something or 40 child trafficking here in your community. And last we told there's nothing. The minute we left you. We find two, just what we're talking about now. We find out two kids there. And then from there, when we're there, we find another one. We find. It was just like all over. There are a lot of them. We know it by then. It's not saying it's one man. Negotiations are a case by case scenario. Uh, in one case, you can have somebody that's just like, okay, this kid is going to get an education. That's great. Have them. In other cases, um, you'll get somebody that'll be like, if I give up this child, it's my livelihood. And I, what will I do? You're telling me that I'm not gonna be able to go and get another child to work for me. And so if I give him up, now I'm without part of my income. If a fisherman um, is one man, and he has a wife and five kids, and those kids are ages 10 and below, that man will most likely try to find someone that will be able to work for him other than his own children so that he can send his children to school. Yeah. 
And then government will also be crying, stop, you will not stop. Stop, you will not stop. Maybe if I release my child to you, what will I eat? Will NGOs come here to give me 500 pesos? So I won't deliver, so secretly I'll just cover the child and then the child will still be on the pond. You have covered something on it and then you didn't open. How do you know that this thing is inside? You put a book inside the bag. You didn't open. Who knows that it is a book? I went in formally saying that the slavery is stopped, but still working. You see, this one, it, formalist one, it was used by physical, but this one is used by secretly. Who will come and tell the NGOs that the child is here suffering? So it's just we, we the parents and you people must negotiate well and well so that this thing will stop. Maybe if the NGOs want to help, you bring some photos, like you bring uh, this uh, desk, and then in the evening time, the children will see their neighbors practicing the way they dress, the way they go to school, so that that videos are here, then the children will see, oh, Papa, tomorrow I also go to school. Look at Akua in the, in the video. You see him nice. Kindly tell the child that if you force your father and your father don't want, then I will contact with the NGOs and then the government. Let the child go to school first, then they will take the child. Maybe tomorrow you will blame me today, tomorrow you will eat on it. Sabi, the Yami Baman or Bama. Bascuni, Miss Minia, Diana Bidi. Mijomia ila, ame